What's up, YouTube? Hey, this is Boss, and um, first off, I want to thank for the, the few people that have subscribed. That's cool. I uh, appreciate you following. I'm glad you're getting some use out of the videos. Um, I haven't really pushed subs subscription because, quite honestly, I don't, I don't know. Uh, this is more just kind of a hobby for me, uh, not by any means going to be a full-time gig, but uh, just so the subscribers know, um, I, do, I do appreciate it. It's kind of cool that uh, you know, somebody out there actually appreciates some of the stuff you're doing. And uh, I guess just so you know what my plans are, is uh, going to focus on the Asus at the time being and uh, pretty much get into a lot of the hardware uses, some of the things I come up with, and then get into and follow the progression of the App Store and do some app reviews. Uh, but we're still in hardware mode. Uh, brand new device, obviously, the Transformer, if you've seen my review on that. And uh, as of Thursday afternoon, I was lucky enough to get my hands and find online a keyboard dock. So here we go. Um, quick tour. Uh, and I'm going to do this with it open just because I can. It's light enough. I've got the full size SD card here, which is actually mounted, so I'm not going to pull that out right now. I've got one full size and functional USB 2 port. And as you can see, it can be a little tricky to get into. But I think they're magnetized, so you have a tendency to kind of fall back. So you've got to kind of get a, get a little system for opening that. But there's your full size USB SD. Flip around the other side here, and we've got. 50 pin charger, uh, your plug, and they don't give you another charger, which I kind of wish they would have, uh, but they don't, so you're going to have to use the charger off your transformer, it'll just plug in here, uh, but I thought, hey, it might be kind of nice if I had, you know, one at the office and one at the house, but as I'm finding with the amount of battery life this thing has, it's kind of pointless to have a second charger, it's a plug it overnight, take it with you, and come back in a day or two, and you'll still have battery. Um, there's your second USB port, right in there, again, full size. And uh, what else? You've got uh, on the back here, let's hold it this way, there we go. On the back you've got the four little rubberized feet, you've got the same same, same texture back as that. And then on the bottom here, it's kind of cool, the hinge, uh, while it is a, uh, I think it's a plastic and a metal combination hinge, but it's got these little kind of rubberized feet, so when you stand it up you're not scratching the heck out of your hinge, it's actually got some rubber feet. So again, Asus has paid attention to details here. I made a very nice device with some very cool, uh, you know they, they thought about more than just let's get a product to market, which unfortunately I think Motorola was in a little bit of a rush, as evident by the non-working SD card and, and some of the things about it. Okay, so let's get to the fun stuff. First and foremost, I've got, like I said, I've got a micro SD card, I've got a 32 gig and a 32 gig normal SD card. I went ahead and bought class 10s. I think the full size one was 50 bucks or no, maybe 60, and uh, spent 100 dollars on the micro 32 gig class 10 off Amazon. Um, and the reason I went class 10, I, I've actually clocked this one right at 19 or 20 meg a second transfer speed, and I think this one was right in that 16, 18. It might have been a little higher, but at any rate. Considering most of what I'm gonna have on removable storage is probably my media, uh, mainly videos movies and that type of thing. I wanted to make sure I had stream speed if I'm doing some higher def stuff and not have any stutters. Um, so looking at the bottom of the screen here, and I'll try to zoom in real quick, you can see the icons. You've got two SD card icons and right in the middle you've got the dock icon. When, one you, when you connect it, you'll get this just telling you the dock is connected. Obviously if that didn't come up, you've got a connection issue somewhere. Um, when you touch this, it comes up and says external storage and it does say micro SD. The other one says SD. Again, maybe that's something obvious, but for me, and to keep track of which one's which, again, kudos to Asus for taking the time to think of all these little details that are happening. Um, so now I know if I want to go into my SD card, I hit the folder button there. And this is actually a movie, something I was just filming another kind of trial run of uh, this actual video. And versus video editing, I like to kind of shoot straight through once I get kind of lined out. Uh, because if something happens and something doesn't work, I'm going to let it show up on the video so people know what to, what to expect and how to fix it. Um, but this is coming off this SD card in here, and I'll just show you. Right there. Works. The dude on the Andrew. So I was doing a quick walkthrough, and uh, I don't remember. I think my dog barked or something, so I decided to stop because he started going nuts over something outside. But at any rate, um, that works fine, but I want to show you here. Um, when you're in the file manager, it tells you where you're at. We're in the removable, removable storage SD. 
If I wanted to copy this onto the internal, I can go copy. And when I do, a new icon shows up here that is the, essentially it shows you it's in a clipboard. If you've ever worked with Windows or whatever, when you, you know, do a control, it basically stores your information in a clipboard. So I can go back one more here, and now I have SD or micro SD. I'm going to go to the micro SD, and I'm going to hit paste, which when you hit the clipboard symbol again, it comes through and pastes it over or essentially copies and writes it. So now I'm transferring from regular SD to micro SD. And you might want to do that if you want to take something with you when you're in tablet form. Or let's say you keep a bunch of movies on this SD card and you decide, hey, I want to watch this tonight in bed. You can simply transfer it over real quick. And as you can see, that's, uh, I don't know, that was probably, uh, I think it was just shy of a gig file. So what's it taking here? 30, 45, maybe a minute to do. Uh, so it's pretty fast. And that, again, is depending on the class card you get. Class 10 is going to transfer the fastest. Um, and, yes, they are, they are a little bit pricier than class four, but it depends how much time you want to, if you're going to be moving stuff around or not. So there it is. Now this is on my micro SD, and I've got the movie sitting right there. So that is kind of cool, easy way to manage data back and forth. Now if I want to get rid of it, and I say, well, I've watched the movie, uh, we just hit delete, and it's gone. So now if you want to know kind of how you're managing your storage, you can go into uh, the little settings key. You can hit your storage. And we can see here, um, I've got on the internal 16 gigs, I've got, uh, looks like I've got 7.8 gigs available. On the micro SD, I have 12.7 gigs available. And then on my SD card out here, which I just bought today, it's basically empty. It's only got, that was, I guess, a 600 megabyte file. So 12.29.8 uh, available, I'm sorry, 29.8 total, 29.2 available. Um, so pretty sweet, and as you add more media, that storage component in the settings will show you how much is available for each, each storage device. So, let's get into the good stuff. Two and a half inch, unpowered, so as you can see, there's no other, there's no other plug-in. This is it. One USB, it's powered by the USB cord. So the question is, is this going to work? And of course, you know, I'm guessing that everything else has worked, so this shouldn't be an issue and it should mount just like everything else. We plug it in. Oh, the light came on. So there we go, the light's on. And it should hopefully start flashing. That's a good sign, it's flashing. So it's, there we go, preparing external storage, excellent. So there we go, and now we have a new icon. I actually tested the USB, I tested this, the USB flash drive, I assume the other would work, and thankfully it does. Um, so external storage, let's go in here. Excellent. So here's about 120 gigs of data that I've carried around and had for my laptop, and awesome it works. And here's some pictures. Um, obviously, I've got some movies. Um, these are actually uh, so it kind of gives you your folder structure where you're at. And you can obviously, and you can use back on there, or I can use back down here on the keyboard, or you can use back on screen. So I'm going to use the keyboard just for ease of use. Uh, here's some movies. Here's Despicable Me. Um, 720p rip. You can see the flashing light on the hard drive. It's streaming off the hard drive through USB. I can feel the hard drive spinning. Sounds fine as far as it's in sync. Screen looks awesome. Sounds great. There you go. Movies off of USB. External 2.0 hard drive. Now to undock this you basically click on it and you hit this little eject icon and it will tell you when it's safe to remove the hardware. And it's obviously stopping the movie and there we go. Remove external drive safely. So we unplug and we're good to go. Okay, um, so, so all the boring media in the world you can plug in and do some cool stuff, but how about this? I got my Android phone. This is the Thunderbolt. I've got a cable. What can I do with this? This is a nice fat battery pack. People pay two and three and four hundred dollars for that kind of battery packs, and they don't do anything else. So if I happen to be carrying around my uh, my transformer and dock, and my phone's dead, well, guess what? Not a problem. We'll plug this bad boy in. It comes up. 
and voila, it says I'm going to go in charge only mode. We hit done. And look at the top of the screen right there. If it'll focus. It's charging. And it shows your connected USB. Sorry, kind of bad camera skills there. But it's charging and it's hooked up. So there you go. Uh, if you've got... <laughs> Obviously, this is about as mobile situation as you can get to have a huge battery pack because um, it will use, I mean, if, if this were to be used as a, uh, a tether situation, which I have not tried, and I will, um, but at this point, it does charge. It does recognize it as a USB drive and it can transfer media and that kind of thing. I have not tried the tether thing yet. That's something I will have to try. So, anyways, since it's in charge mode, there is no, there is no icon, so there is no... Um, reason to unmount it. You can simply unplug it. Um, you're fine in charge mode. If you go into disk mode, yes you will want to eject the media, which is the hard disk or the, the memory on the, the phone, but in charge mode you're fine. So there we have it. Um, let's get into some of the keyboard features. As I told you, this, this button right here turns on or turns off the trackpad. Let's turn it on. So as you can see the mouse here, and I'll go to uh, Google's the best probably site to see the mouse moving around. It's a black mouse. Um, let's go find Google. Go at home. All right, so there's here's the mouse. As you can see, it's very responsive. Um, the mouse tracks. I have not found the ability to change the tracking speed or sensitivity. I'm guessing there's going to be an application. That's the beauty of Android. Um, somebody will come out with a system or a kernel or whatever that you slap on there that you have full control over the mouse. But honestly, it feels pretty good. I mean, you go from corner to corner, and it's pretty much right in tune with the screen. Um, it is where it thinks it is, or where you think it should be. Um, I don't find it too fast, too slow, uh, whatever. Uh, it's very responsive as far as, like, when I target something, I can just tap. And if you use, like, a MacBook Pro or any of the MacBook lines from Apple, which I know most Android people probably haven't, but um, it's that quality of track, track pad and the ability to simply um, click or tap versus actually physically clicking something gives you a very nice feel for um, just control over the mouse and what you want to click on. You don't have to have physically depress the click button. Uh, but you can, and you can use um, your right, your right click for the right deal. Um, Oh, we're not on there. So let's go back. Okay, so if we're on we're on a screen here, you can use two fingers for multi-touch scrolling. I haven't even filled up my two far screens. I'll have to do that. But uh, back and forth, obviously very responsive, and we'll go wherever you want it to go. Um, sometimes my like here's the mouse. I got the mouse over my email widget. A lot of times I'll bring that mouse right in the center of the screen at the bottom and then lock it. And that way the mouse is stationary there. The trackpad is locked from moving the mouse, but I can still um, use the functionality of the full keyboard and not worry about my hands hitting this. So obviously I just hit search. Okay, so here's something I can type. So you can type, but you're not going to move the mouse or hit any erroneous key clicks if you turn that off. Now if I want to turn it back on, obviously it's a quick button. It's back on and you have full control over your mouse again. So we're going to park it down there. I'm going to go back to uh, my home screen. Um, and that's about it. Obviously, the the obvious, you know, Wi-Fi off, on, all that stuff. Uh, if you want to go directly to the web and don't want to, you know, you have your mouse off, you can hit the, there's the button that takes you directly to your browser. There's the button that takes you directly to your settings. Um, here's the screen pick. Uh, that's auto brightness, my bad. There's brightness up, brightness down. And it's, you can hold it and it doesn't move. You actually do have to push the button each time. That's to bring the brightness back up. There's the screen. Let's do the screen pick. Screen capture. And it says screenshot is saved. So that screenshot of just this is probably in the gallery. Uh, loading screenshots. Camera. I don't know where. Oh, it's right there. Screenshots. Voila. There's the screenshot I just took. So simple as that. Um, everything else up there is volume. And then, of course, lock. You hit the lock screen. It just blankets, uh, blacks out the screen. Now when you hit lock again, brings it back up, which is somewhat, I don't know, counterintuitive maybe, but <laughs> it works. And uh, you unlock your screen, you're good to go. So that is the uh, my first overview of, uh, of what this bad boy can do. Um, 
as I find more interesting items I will but uh, at any rate if you got any questions or comments something you want to try let me know uh, I'm in kind of the exploring everything right now and what the capabilities of the lap of the uh, dock is and definitely going to be start using some stuff like going to some online sites for flash games and use a mouse and keyboard and see how all that works so uh, keep checking back appreciate you watching and we'll talk to you soon